here we have a jumbo IA tree that's just beside the basketball court in school. Over here, there's some flowers on the jumbo tree and also a fruit. Let's have a closer look at what's going on here. This tree is located just beside the basketball court in school. The name of the tree in Malay is Jambu Aye and in English, Water Apple, the name of the fruit. At the end of the, one of the branches is a cluster of three flowers being visited by bees. Let's have a closer look at the structure of the flowers and what's going on here. Each of the flowers has many, many hair-like filaments and at the end of the filaments are the anthers, the structures which produce and store the pollen grains, the male reproductive cells. In the middle of each flower is a long thing sticking out that's thicker than the filaments and that is the style, part of the female parts of the flower. At the end of the style is the stigma. For the flower to become pollinated, pollen grains must land on the stigma. And as you can see, there's a bee that is approaching the flowers and it is about to touch one of the stigmas as it goes into the flower. It will probably pollinate that flower if it's carrying pollen grains. And there, it's gone into the flower having touched the stigma. Now the bees go into the flowers because they are attracted by the scent of the flowers, by the appearance of the flowers. The flowers are light coloured, they're kind of yellowish white, they have some petals and the bees can, can smell the sweet scent from quite a distance away and the bees all go to the flowers because they can collect a sweet tasting liquid that's produced at the base of the flowers called nectar. In order to get to the nectar, the bees have to crawl through all the anthers and the filaments and in the, in the process of doing that, they get covered in pollen grains so that when they fly to another flower and touch the stigma, some of the pollen grains may um, get rubbed off onto the stigma and thus pollinate the flower. Once the flower has been pollinated, the pollen grains on the stigma will grow a pollen tube down through the style into the ovary and into an ovule where the male nucleus of the pollen tube will fuse or join together with the female nucleus of an egg cell inside the ovule in a process called fertilization. Once pollination and fertilization have taken place, all the anthers and filaments and petals will drop off the flower because it doesn't need them anymore and the ovary of the flower will develop into that which is the fruit of the jambu aye tree. It's a nice juicy fruit that's good to eat. Now here we see some flowers that have been pollinated and fertilized and all the anthers and the filaments and the petals have fallen off because the flower no longer needs them. All that's left is the ovary, the style and the stigma. Although the stigma and the style will eventually also wither and fall off. If you look down below the flowers on the ground, you can actually see all the anthers and the filaments and the petals that have fallen off the fertilized flowers. Here you see some petals that have fallen from the flowers above. And all the hairy things here, these are the filaments and the anthers that have fallen off the flowers that have been fertilized. Here is a fruit that has been partially eaten by a bird. Here you can see a jambu fruit that was eaten by a bird. So the birds have to disperse the seeds of the jambu tree. Here you have some of the mature fruit and as you can see they've been partly eaten by a bird and the insects are also attracted to the sweet sap from the fruit. So the fruits also help to attract insects to the tree. Although the insects don't disperse the seeds, they may then go on to um, pollinate the flowers. Here you see a minor bird eating one of the fruits of the jumbo aye tree or water apple tree. Can you guess how the seeds of this plant are dispersed? Now that you know the role that insects like bees play in the reproduction of the jambu tree, what do you think would happen 
if there were no such insects, what would you think would happen to our jambu ayes if all the bees were to die out, if there were no more bees? To find out how important bees are for food production, click on the link here.